Okay, so um, what we need to discuss now is analytic continuation. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, uh, what is called as uh, uh, analytic extension. Okay, so let me explain this analytic extension. So uh, so what is this notion of analytic extension? See the the idea is that uh, uh, to gi to give an analytic function, okay, uh, there are many ways, all right. Uh, of course, I'm considering an analytic function on a domain, which is an open connected set of the complex plane, all right. And uh, to an analytic function can be given by a formula, or it can be given by a power series, all right. Or it can even be given as the integral of a function, okay. Uh, there are so many ways, all right. Now, uh, but the prob the problem is that uh, if uh, an analytic function is given in a certain way, say it is given uh, by a power series, okay, centered at a point. Of course, you know that uh, the power series will converge in the disk of convergence, okay. But outside the disk of convergence, what happens? You do not know. All right. Similarly, you may I may give an analytic function by a formula uh, or by some properties in a domain. I don't know whether uh, uh, that formula will hold outside the domain, okay, or whether it will define a proper uh, define an analytic function outside the domain. Okay. So the the question of trying to see uh, how far uh, this anal uh, you can find an analytic function uh, uh, how far means on a largest possible open set on which you, you can define this analytic function largest possible open connected set okay. Uh, that is a question that we first need to understand okay. So you know I will give you an example so you see so let me say this uh, 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 so the analytic extension the other word I would like to use is uh, direct analytic continuation this is the other word I would like to use and what is this. So you see uh, start with uh, a pair d comma f where d in c is a domain which means it is an open connected set of course non empty and f from f is a function that is defined on t it is a complex value valued function and it is analytic on t okay. Analytic or holomorphic. Okay, start with the start with the pair like this. Okay, um, we say that uh, another such pair d prime comma f prime. Okay. Uh, is a direct analytic continuation or analytic extension of the original pair d comma f if f restricted to uh, if uh, d and d prime intersect
T and D prime intersect and f restricted to f restricted to d intersection d prime is equal to f prime restricted to d intersection d prime okay so uh, so the roughly uh, one uh, picture that you can think of uh, but of course it's not the best picture because i'm in this picture i'm only considering bounded domains which is simply connected uh, so you know this may be uh, a domain d uh, on which you have you have function f with values in the complex plane and well uh, and this side of course is the complex plane and you may have another domain uh, d prime and i would have an uh, analytic function f prime defined on d prime d prime and the condition is that where uh, d and d prime do meet and uh, uh, in the intersection which is also an open set uh, f restricted to d intersection d prime is the same as f prime restricted to d intersection d prime we say that uh, uh, the pair d prime comma f prime is a direct analytic continuation of the pair d comma f okay and of course you can see that uh, it, it is also the same as saying that d comma f is a direct analytic con continuation of d prime comma f prime and uh, why uh, wh what is so special about this this the thing that is special about this is that these two functions uh, glue together to give an analytic function on the union okay. So what you can do is you can define g so so in this case in 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 such a case define g from the union to c by g restricted to d is equal to f and g restricted to d prime is equal to f prime you define it like this this definition makes sense because uh, if you go to d intersection d prime g restricted to d intersection d prime will be f restricted to d inter intersection d prime and g restricted to uh, d intersection d prime will also be equal to f prime restricted to d intersection d prime but they are one and the same because of this condition okay. So this is just a gluing condition it tells you that the function f uh, and the function f prime they give one and the same analytic function on the intersection okay and the intersection is non empty right and what we say that g is obtained by gluing f and f prime okay we say we see that g is analytic and uh, uh, we say uh, that g is obtained by gluing f and f prime along d intersection d prime good so you have just glued the functions together to give you, you have two so you have got two open sets and you have got uh, two functions defined respectively on those two open sets and what you have done is you have put those functions together to get a function on the union of the two open sets and it makes sense because they coincide on the intersection alright and of course analyticity is not an issue because analyticity is locally defined this function g is on, on this set if you, you if you take a point in the union the point has to either lie on in this set or in this set and if it lies in this set then g is the same as f and f is analytic so g is analytic if the point is on this set then g is f prime so uh, again it is analytic so g is analytic because analyticity is a local local property okay so this g that you have defined is analytic right uh, now the point is that uh, 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 so, so this is a very simple uh, concept, right? But the point is that the way in which <coughs> f is defined uh, 
may <coughs> you, uh, may be very different from the way in which f prime is defined okay. So uh, uh, in other words I am saying whenever you want to specify a pair d comma f or d prime comma f prime you are trying to specify an analytic function on an open set okay but that can be given in many different ways you can do for example an analytic function can be given as a power series because you know power series is an analytic function okay it can be given uh, by a formula all right involving say some standard functions like polynomials uh, is the standard trigonometric inverse trigonometry exponential logarithmic functions okay or it can be also given by an integral of an analytic some other analytic function all right uh, with the variable be a variable being uh, the upper uh, uh, the end point of the uh, path of integration which starts from a fixed point in the domain provided the integral is well defined okay. So there are different ways of defining the analytic function now the problem is that uh, from the way in which an analytic function is defined it is not it is not at all uh, sometimes it is not very easy at all to guess that it really uh, uh, extends. Uh, to a region beyond which it is defined okay. So I will give you an example so the point is that you know the first question is if you give me a pair can you find a, an analytic extension a direct analytic continuation for that in a domain which is which contains points different from the original domain okay. So the problem is suppose I start with a pair d comma f namely an analytic function on a domain d my question is uh, can I find a uh, an, can I extend it to an analytic function on a bigger set. So in this case you know what has happened is both d comma f and d prime comma f prime have been extended to g on d union d prime okay. So the question is therefore the idea is therefore to try to see uh, if at all there is a largest open set on which you can extend it okay that is the first question the second question is on the largest open set the new function that you get can you describe it in some way okay that is the question. So uh, uh, to just to tell you the uh, kind of things uh, uh, the myriad things that happen so I will give you an example uh, uh, so you know the first example is rather very interesting uh, so take 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 d to be the set of all uh, z such that uh, mod z less than 1 is a unit disc okay and take f of z to be 1 plus z plus z squared plus z cube the geometric series okay you take the function and take the geometric series. Now uh, you know that f of z this is a power series centered at uh, z okay. So if I draw a diagram my situation is like this so here is a unit disc so I have a unit disc so this is my d and here is this function which is given by a power series you know the radius of convergence of that power series is 1 all right and uh, therefore uh, inside the disc of convergence okay the disc of convergence in this case is the unit disc okay the region inside this unit circle okay there you know the power inside the disc of convergence the power series always represents an analytic function and what is the analytic function that it represents it is that analytic function for which if you write out the Taylor series expansion at the center of that disc you will get back the power series. So this is an analytic function okay for this analytic function if you again try to write the Taylor expansion at 0 you will get back this series. So I am just saying that the if you start with a power series okay uh, uh, centered at a point then inside the disc of convergence around about that point the power series represents an analytic function for that analytic function if you write the Taylor series about that point you will again get back the power series because the power series uh, th this is the statement that you often see in a first course in complex analysis which says that power series are analytic functions okay <coughs> and uh, 
the proof is essentially the fact that uh, uh, the power series uh, uh, if you take a disks which is uh, if you take a disk a closed disk which is contained inside the disk of convergence the power series converges uniformly and absolutely and uh, uh, and in fact uh, therefore uh, uh, what will happen is that it can be it, it can be differentiated infinitely many times and the differentiate and every time you differentiate it the new power series will also have the same radius of convergence. The fact that you can differentiate it tells you that it is analytic that is why power series are analytic ok. So, so here is an example so here is my power series and now now the point is uh, so here is my pair d comma f alright. Now you you know uh, you can easily guess that there is a uh, you know uh, there is a way to extend this ok there is a way to extend this because you know that uh, uh, this if you consider now you consider d prime to be the plane minus the point 1 and you consider f prime uh, I think f prime is a very bad notation so let me use d 1 f 1 is well uh, uh, 1 by 1 minus z ok you take this. Now this function uh, f 1 uh, is certainly analytic on uh, the see this is a this is a, a just a reciprocal of a polynomial and you know a reciprocal of a, a polynomial is of course an analytic function everywhere it is an entire function and uh, a recip uh, the reciprocal of an entire fu uh, analytic function will also continue to be analytic so long as the denominator does not vanish and the denominator vanishes only at z equal to 1 all right so this so far as so, lo so long as z is not equal to 1 this is an analytic function so here is another pair and the fact is that these two thi this pair is uh, a direct analytic extension of this because you know for 1 by 1 minus z if you take this function and try to write out the power series at the origin you will get ex exactly the geometric series which is which you know as uh, you you write 1 by 1 minus z as 1 minus z to the minus 1 and then you use binomial theorem and expand it you get the geometric series 1 minus z to the minus 1 is 1 plus z plus z square that is what I have written. So, you can see that d 1 comma f 1 is uh, uh, is an analytic extension or direct analytic continuation. of uh, d comma f ok and uh, the point is that uh, uh, it is it is rather what is really mysterious is the following see if you consider the functional form as given by a power by the power series in this form the function does not live at any point on the boundary because you know if you take any point on the boundary it will be of the form e power i theta it will be a complex number of modulus 1. So, it will be of the form e power i theta for theta real ok where of course theta is this angle if you want alright and if I plug in e power i theta into this uh, series then uh, the nth term is e power i n theta it is modulus is 1. So, if I evaluate this power series at at any boundary point of the circle the nth term always has mod 1 therefore the nth term does not go to 0 and if you know for a numerical series if the nth term does not go to 0 it cannot converge a necessary condition for a power series to converge is a necessary condition for a numerical series to converge is that the nth term should go to 0 ok. So, this tells you that this this power series does not live even on the boundary it lives strictly inside ok its life is only inside even on the boundary it does not make sense ok. But notice that this is equal to this which lives everywhere except the point 1 ok 1 by 1 minus z of course lives everywhere except for z equal to 1 because z equal to 1 is a pole of order 1 it is a simple pole it is a 0 of order 1 of the denominator of the function right. 
So the moral of the story is that for if I give you a if you give you if I give you an analytic function in a certain in a certain way the way I have defined the analytic function may restrict it from uh, extending uh, you know in in the in the form I have given it to you beyond the region that I have given. So I cannot expect this this power series to extend even to the to any point on the unit circle okay but that does not mean that the analytic function does not extend the analytic function as a function is actually 1 by 1 minus z it it extends the problem is with uh, trying to only look at it as a power series it is a the power series has limited life only on the interior of the unit disc but it does so what you must understand is so what is it that is happening I have this power series that certainly gives me an analytic function but just because the power series has a life only sense makes sense only inside the unit disc does not mean that the analytic function it represents lives only there the analytic function which actually it represents may live on a much bigger open set and the whole theory of uh, analytic extension and analytic conti continuation is to try to find whether given a function on a domain which may be given by a power series or whatever it is you have to find out whether it really extends okay and uh, it is a pretty uh, involved kind of uh, problem all right I will give you uh, I will give you another example so here is which is very similar to this and that is the example of the zeta function so you know uh, incidentally before I do that I want to tell you that you know uh, if I try to make an analytic extension of a pair the analytic extension that I will get uh, uh, if I take an analytic extension of a given pair okay then that extension is unique and that is just because of the identity theorem okay see uh, see so here is a uniqueness the uniqueness is well if d prime comma so he even here I think uh, I think it was bad notation to have used f prime because it would confuse you with the derivative of f so uh, maybe I will uh, I will better late than never I will switch to d1 f1 and change everything to I will change all the super primes to sub primes <coughs> so let me do this. So, of course, when I wrote f prime, I didn't mean the derivative of f. Okay, so let me change that. Sorry for the bad notation. Okay. So let let so so the point I want to make is if d if d one comma f one and d two. Uh, and d1 comma uh, f2 are uh, analytic extensions of uh, uh, d comma f then f1 is equal to f2 okay this is just a consequence of the identity theorem because what you will get is you see uh, why is that true because you know uh, if you take f1 and restrict it to uh, d1 intersection d or that is d intersection d1 I will get f restricted to d intersection d1 and that is supposed to also be equal to f2 restricted to d intersection d1 okay this equality is because uh, f1 is a uh, analytic extension of f and this equality is because f2 is analytic extension of f so what will happen is you have two analytic functions f1 and f2 defined on the same domain d1 and uh, on a smaller open set d intersection d1 which is non empty on a non empty smaller open set they are equal therefore they are the identity theorem will tell you that they are throughout equal 
So, what so let me recall what the identity theorem says the identity theorem says if you have two analytic functions uh, defined on a domain and suppose their values are equal even on a convergent sequence of points okay and with the limit of the convergent sequence in the domain of analyticity okay then they are always equal their value at every point is equal. So, to check that two analytic functions are equal on a domain all you have to do is to find uh, just one sequence of conver convergent sequence of points in the domain which converges to a point in the domain and verify that for each point of the sequence the two analytic functions take the same value okay. So and of course if you give me a non empty open set uh, I can find uh, so many convergent sequences there okay because it is because it will always con contain a disk and I can always take a convergent sequence of points going to the center of the disk if you want okay along the radius. So, so the identity theorem will tell you that f1 and f2 uh, are one and the same. So, the so a direct analytic continuation to a given domain uh, is it has to be unique okay. So, uh, this is so this is because uh, because of this and the identity theorem okay. So, so the analytic the ad, a direct analytic extension is unique all right. Now, now what I want you to understand is and of course, of course there are situations where uh, 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 if you give me a domain and you give me another domain which intersects it uh, analytic extensions are not analytic extensions are not possible. So, for example, you know if I if you in the in this example uh, in, in the in this example suppose I continue with this example suppose I take D2 to be D2 is equal to any domain any domain in C containing the point 1. Containing the point one, okay, then there is no direct, there is there is no analytic extension of uh, this function to the point one. Okay, there is no analytic extension of this function to the point one because of the simple reason that uh, uh, the point one is a singularity. See, the maximal analytic extension of this function is the function one by one minus z. That is the that is the maximal analytic extension. That is the largest possible open set on which this, the function representing this power series, the analytic function that represents this power series can be extended. Okay. So, the 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 function is one by one minus z. The largest set on which it, may which is which is this analytic is, uh, leaves out the point one, because the point one is a pole. It's not a removable singularity. If a point is a removable singularity, then you can correct it by defining the value of the function at that point to be the limit that you get as you go to that point, but this is not a removable singularity it is a pole it cannot be corrected okay. So, if you take any domain which contains that pole there is certainly no analytic extension of this function to that okay. So, uh, then there is no analytic extension. of uh, d comma f or d 1 comma f 1 to d 2 there is no analytic extension okay. So, uh, of course this fact I made about uh, uniqueness is true for any analytic extension and here I am returning back to this example right. So, th th there are uh, 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 so, the idea is that uh, you cannot expect an analytic extension across a across a singularity ac across singularities right. Now, uh, so the the, uh, the other example that I want to talk about is the uh, the Riemann zeta function okay. So, that is a that is a function which is uh, uh, so you know you define 
uh, the fall uh, so so let me give this example uh, d so this is another example let me call this example 2 so this is example 1 so let us go to example 2 define zeta of z to be let me take it from n equal to 1 to infinity okay so I will start with n equal to 1 to infinity and uh, so uh, this is just if you write it uh, it will be 1 by 1 power z plus 1 by 2 power z plus 1 by 3 power z and so on right so I will define it like this okay and by that I mean of course sigma n equal to 1 to infinity as I just explained it is 1 by e power z ln n okay and uh, 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 and the the point you must understand is that each of these functions uh, ln n is a constant okay ln n is a real logarithm of n that is a constant and uh, z into ln n is of course an analytic function because it is a polynomial of degree 1 okay it is just the analytic function z multiplied by a constant and e power that is also an analytic function. So each of these functions is an entire function each uh, so each uh, each function 1 by e power z ln n is entire it's an ent each of these is an entire function okay and mind you uh, uh, since I have put uh, an exponential uh, the denominator can never vanish so I can put it in the denominator okay so whenever I put something in the denominator I should always be worried about whether it vanishes but what I put in the denominator is an exponential and you know exponential never vanishes so it is always defined and it is always analytic so these are all entire functions so if you take this sum this is again an entire function okay but where so there is a there is an issue there so 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 what you do is you you take the uh, the so here is my uh, uh, so let me write d let me define d to be the right half plane okay uh, to the right of the uh, point uh, uh, to, to the right of the vertical line passing through z equal to 1 okay. So you define it like this so you take so here is a diagram so here is the complex plane okay and here is the point 1 and I draw this line this is the point real part of z equal to 1 okay this is that line the real part of z is x so this is the line x equal to 1 line parallel to the y axis this is the imaginary axis and I am taking this region so this is my d it is a right half plane okay so d is a set of all z in C complex numbers such that uh, a real part of z is greater than 1 the imaginary part can be anything okay. So this is the right half plane it is a right half plane that is to the right of the line the vertical line passing through z equal to 1 which is given by the equation real part of z equal to 1 okay. Now the fact is that zeta is uh, uh, is actually an analytic function on d so fact is zeta is analytic on d okay the function zeta is analytic on t so in fact uh, 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 probably you have uh, seen this in a first course in complex analysis first of all this is a this is a this is a series okay it is a functional series with the nth function given by 1 by e per z ln n okay first of all a functional series need not converge so first of all for this to make sense as a function it has to converge okay and the fact is it will converge okay and then the next fact is that uh, this convergent function uh, once it converges it defines a function zeta it is called the Riemann zeta function okay and the fact is that this Riemann zeta function is actually analytic 
okay so the uh, so what is the uh, so let me briefly recall uh, how you prove such a thing so what you do is well you take you take uh, you take a line to the right of uh, this given by real part of z equal to 1 plus epsilon where uh, uh, 1 plus epsilon where epsilon is positive and you, you can take epsilon as small as you want but you take a vertical line to the right of this line okay and what you do is uh, uh, you use the Weierstrass m test to show that this function converges uh, uniformly and absolutely on the right half plane e starting from this line and including that line. So the the uh, so uh, so the Weierstrass m test shows that zeta z uh, converges in the set of all z such that real part of z uh, greater than or equal to 1 plus uh, epsilon uh, both uniformly and absolutely. that is the Weierstrass m test okay and uh, so you know one can easily check that it is pretty easy to check that so let me let me continue here uh, in in this uh, in this right half plane closed right half plane uh, given by real part of z greater than equal to 1 plus epsilon uh, what you have is uh, uh, is z is x plus i y and x is greater than or equal to 1 plus epsilon okay. So what you will get is uh, uh, it is a, it is an estimation so if you calculate e power uh, uh, if you take the uh, nth term of that uh, of that functional series it is 1 by e power uh, z ln n okay you see so it is equal to 1 by x plus i y ln n ln n uh, uh, which is that is right it is 1 by because it is multiplicative so it is x to the ln x ln n d e power i y ln n and as as you rightly pointed out the mod of this is 1 so I end up with 1 by e to the x ln n this is what I get that is good and uh, now I think I am more or less done because x is greater than or equal to 1 plus epsilon x ln n is also greater than or equal to 1 plus epsilon ln n and e to that, that will also be greater than that and the reciprocal will go the other direction. So you see x greater than or equal to 1 plus epsilon uh, will tell you that x ln n is greater than or equal to 1 plus epsilon ln n and uh, that will also tell you that e to the x ln n is greater than or equal to e to the 1 plus epsilon ln n that is because ln n is uh, n is greater than or equal to 1 so ln is positive that is why this inequality holds and then the exponential function for reals is an increasing function okay so this holds so uh, so this will be the same as e to the x ln n because it is a real number okay and uh, uh, that is going to be less than or equal to 1 by uh, e to the 1 plus epsilon ln n and that is 1 by uh, n to the 1 plus epsilon this is what you get okay. So if you take the nth term of the uh, if you take the nth term of this series then in modulus it is dominated by this uh, numerical term okay and if you take the, cor the corresponding numerical series for this what you will get is you will get sigma n equal to 1 to infinity 1 1 by n to the power of 1 plus epsilon okay if you take this this is convergent this is a fact that you would have learnt in uh, any first course in analysis 
uh, if you take sigma 1 by n power alpha okay that will always be convergent for any alpha greater than 1 alright. So this is convergent so the moral of the story is uh, your your whole if you so you know if I start with the if I start with this functional series for the zeta function if I take the absolute series that means I take the series that you get by take taking absolute term absolute values for each term then the absolute series is dominated by this numerical series which is convergent okay and this is exactly the situation of the Weierstrass m test which says that whenever a functional series is dominated by uh, which is uh, absolutely dominated by a numerical series which is convergent then the original functional series converges uniformly and absolutely this is the of course it since the absolute series itself uh, so first of all there is a dominated convergence theorem which says that if a series is dominated by another series and the the dominating series converges then the original series converges so what this will tell you is that if i take sigma uh, if i take the absolute series for the series corresponding to the zeta function that will converge and you know it is also a fact that absolute convergence implies convergence okay therefore that will also tell you that the original function functional series for the zeta will converge so the moral of the story is that the original uh, series that that was used to define the zeta function that converges both absolutely and uniformly and that happens for every epsilon uh, greater than 0 and therefore it if I make epsilon small enough I can cover every point in the right half plane right to the right of the point to the right of the line x equal to 1 by taking epsilon small enough I can cover every point therefore this gives you the fact that uh, uh, that the zeta function the series for the zeta function actually converges for uh, every point lying in that right half plane to the right of the point to, 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 to the right of the line vertical line passing through uh, z equal to 1 okay. So, th so this implies that zeta z converges absolutely and uniformly uh, on in uh, the set of all in D which is the uh, uh, set of all Z such that uh, real part of Z is greater than 1 uh, greater than or equal to 1 plus epsilon uh, this is not D 1 plus epsilon for every epsilon greater than 0 okay. Now from this there are two facts that you can get the first fact is that zeta of z uh, converges in D that is the first fact because any point of D I can uh, make it lie in a region like this by taking epsilon small enough okay. So zeta converges in D okay the second fact is not only does it converge I now claim it is analytic I am claiming that this zeta is analytic why is that so that is so because of a fact that I had stated in several several lectures ago namely whenever you have a sequence of analytic functions if it converges normally okay when you have whenever you have a series of analytic functions or if you have a sequence of analytic functions if you have a sequence of analytic functions if the sequence converges normally then the limit function is also analytic okay this is a fact that uh, I uh, uh, stated in uh, an earlier lecture and the proof was essentially that the limit function uh, the normal convergence will mean that it is convergent on you it converges uniformly on compact subsets and this uniform convergence will ensure that the limit function is continuous and then what will happen is that analyticity will follow from Morera's theorem and uh, you use uh, also the fact that because of uniform convergence you can interchange limit and integral okay. So uh, uh, you can go back to that earlier lecture where I proved in detail that you know if you have a normal limit okay if you have a, a normal limit of analytic functions then the limit function is also analytic. So what is happening in this case is that you you can consider this function zeta as uh, the series but what is a series a series is just a limit of partial sums and the partial sums are analytic 
because they are sums of analytic functions in fact they are the partial sums are entire functions okay. So you the partial sums of this series are entire functions they are analytic functions and the series converges uniformly on any such uh, closed right half plane therefore uh, on the on an interior of such a closed right half plane it will represent an analytic function because the only condition that is required is you must have normal convergence you must have convergence which is uniform on compact subsets but you here you have uniform convergence on the whole closed half, half plane that is the right half plane including the boundary which is a line to the right of z equal to 1. So that theorem will tell you that zeta is actually analytic that is how you get analyticity okay. So uh, so and is analytic in D okay. So this is the zeta function this is the famous zeta function and uh, uh, so here is my so here is my uh, func here is my pair which consists of the famous zeta function and this domain which is the open right half plane okay which consists of all points to the right of this line okay and the question is can this be analytically continued can this be analytically continued so this question is very similar to the the simple first example that we saw the simple first example uh, also uh, consisted of a function which is defined by a series uh, on a on a on a domain in this case the series was a power series and the domain is a was a unit disk and one could see by introspection by inspection that well uh, one could see that it is just 1 by 1 minus z and therefore one was able to guess that it could be extended to the whole complex plane except the point z equal to 1 which is a pole okay. Now the amazing fact is the following the amazing fact is the zeta function also admits an analytic extension to the whole plane except the point z equal to 1 exactly like the geometric series okay when you try to extend the geometric series to the whole plane it admits an extension and the extension has a trouble only at z equal to 1 and at z equal to 1 what kind of trouble does it have it has a pole of order 1 okay it has a simple pole of uh, it is a simple pole at z equal to 1 amazingly enough zeta also extends to the whole plane except the point z equal to 1 and at z equal to 1 it has exactly a simple pole okay. So this is what happens but to prove this is not trivial it needs a theory of analytic continuation analytic extensions okay. So uh, the point I want to make is that uh, 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 trying to find uh, whether an, a function has an analytic extension is not a easy is not an easy problem okay. But it happens that in the case of zeta function uh, it can be extended to the whole plane minus this point what is the problem with this point at this point uh, you know what is going to happen it the series becomes a harmonic series okay and the harmonic series is uh, it does not converge okay. So uh, that is the only troublesome point okay it is hard to believe that uh, it can extend to all other points on this line except the point z equal to 1 where all the other points on the line also seem to be very difficult points but the truth is it extends everywhere the only point where it cannot be extended is z equal to 1 where it becomes a harmonic series and that the and that for the extended uh, zeta function the zeta function which is the full extension of this function to the whole plane minus the point z equal to 1 that point z equal to 1 is only a simple pole okay. So this is a beautiful fact okay and we will we will have to prove it I uh, will try to prove it okay. So, uh, so I just want to summarize by saying that you the problem of finding an analytic extension can be very simple or it can be pretty complicated okay theorem zeta extends to an analytic function. that is it admits an analytic extension on C minus 1 which has a simple pole at 
at z equal to 1 ok. So, this is a uh, so uh, this needs proof uh, we will try to prove this at some point but uh, so this is the uh, uh, so this is the story about uh, trying to extend an analytic function. Now I want to tell you that it is purely a matter of uh, 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 abstract mathematics uh, to ensure that if you start with a pair consisting of a analytic function on a domain ok a pair consisting of a domain and an, and an analytic function on it namely a pair of the form d comma f then there exists a maximal extension of that ok. So, uh, so we will continue uh, with this discussion in the next lecture.